All right, that's excellent. What is happening, guys and gals? Welcome to another fantastic live stream session of Meet the Monsters. We have a super special monster here today. This is Mr. Ken Eller. He is affectionately known as the Captain. He has called this because he has spent many, many years in pipe bands as pipe major, and he has his own uh, online educational platform called The Captain's Corner, a beautiful resource for learning pipe, uh, learning piping online. Ken Eller has been in this scene for a long time. You just told me you played in the Grade One Arena for forty years. That is beautiful. Years, <laughs> 40 wonderful years that's awesome i know you led the the you know very acclaimed clan mcfarland for the longest time you also spent some time in the frasers but now ken eller in addition to running your own uh website and teaching people all over the world bagpipes online you are on the staff for m half the midwest highland um uh arts foundation who hosts winter storm which what i i've described winter storm to people for years as the perhaps the most important piping and drumming event in north america and especially since i often deal with folks who are new to pipe bands i tell them if you have the time and money to go to one event this year to really explore this whole piping and drumming thing you need to go to kansas city in in uh january you need to go to winter storm and ken eller you've been a part of winter storm since basically day one and we're chatting with you today because you guys just put out a beautiful nearly two-hour virtual concert. And we definitely want to make sure as many people see that as popular because it's wonderful music. It's a wonderful compilation. And this is a really beautiful time to introduce you to the Monster community and to help us understand how a little event in Kansas City became one of the most popular piping and drumming events in the world. So Ken Eller, thank you so much for joining us. We'd love to hear how Winter Storm has evolved to this wonderful thing we see today from the man himself. Oh, thank you, Michael. You make me sound much better than what I really am. Uh, <laughs> I'm a worky at the uh, M Half Winter Storm event. And uh, I think a little history here would be uh, apropos. Yeah. This event started in the year 2001. Uh, a small event, just a weekend workshop for musicians, pipers and drummers. Mm -hmm. And that's been the case uh, every year. There's always been workshops around the country. Um, they knew it was gonna be a good event by the instructors that they had. And from that instructor base and also the attendee base, they decided that, well, let's have a, a year or two. And they brought on the concept of maybe having a favorite contest. And that was 2002 or so. Uh, hence the 20 years uh, in existence. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. by 2003, uh, with the usual instructor's recital, they start the powers to be, the directors started thinking, well, what about a concert as well? And so by 2004, this had gone from a small seed of just a weekend workshop to uh, a concert, workshops, and contests. And Serious just, contests. Oh, but it wasn't always that way. It just grew mm -hmm. and grew. We had a silver mm -hmm. medal and a gold medal. Drumming was added, as you well know, and you've been there several times. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, we had gold medal drumming. We had snares. We had tenors. We had bass. And, oh, it started to grow. It's getting yeah. not out of control. It's well controlled by this great board of directors. And so I came on around 2004, um, for, uh, most likely, to handle the MC events for the concert. And I, I laugh back to those days. It must be a product of my age. Uh, I said, why are you hiring me on? I'm a piper up in Canada. But the answer was, you know everybody. Well, when you've been around 40 or 50 years, you get to know quite a few, as you, you know, I can imagine. That's right. And, and so we came on, and then uh, from that spot, we brought in people like Doug Stronick uh, to start managing the concert. Prior to him, there was Mark Stanfield, one of the directors at the time. And they got this thing going. Um, and it grew and grew, and each year we uh, started adding to it. Uh, we had the benefit of amateur contests coming on, uh, and then the mounds of people that came for the workshops, and as I said in the video, to rub shoulders with some of the greatest players in the world. And if you go through the roster of the instructors that we had, uh, we've had the best of the best over the 20 years, and we continue right. to do so, you know? That's right. um, so it's got to the point right now with the pandemic, uh, obviously, we had 
had to sit down. And I think people should be aware uh, of how it, this concert online got going. Mm -hmm. uh, in a conversation back in October of 2020 with Beth Wilson, the president, we discussed what we could do. And at that time, um, I'm an educator uh, I'd like, and I like entertainment, but I found every association around was putting online contest events uh, up. And I just, I said the uh, one thing to Beth, I said, rather than throw our hat in the ring with all this other, uh, other, other events going on of a similar nature, which only catered to a very few, let's face it. That's right. Uh, not most, more musicians play for entertainment than they do to compete. I said, well, why don't you consider something uh, in the other two lines, our education line or our concert line? Well, yeah. uh, we decided on the concert because that could reach out to the most number of people. And hence, uh, that's where it was left. A couple weeks later, she phones Murray Blair, who had come on two years ago as the uh, director of the concert. And his experience is definitely in audio work and yeah. uh, some cinematography work. Uh, and he developed, he has developed electronic instruments, you see, the Blair right. Channer. Right. And coming on, um, um, he started to redefine the concert uh, and making it more of a stage production rather yeah. than one yeah. person getting up. You can see how it's evolving, isn't, isn't it? Indeed, yes. And, yeah. And, and from that point on, when Murray uh, agreed to best phone call, he's, we, we said, okay, Ken and Murray are going to get together and going to, uh, put an online contest to fill that void and keep our patrons and our friends and the world informed that we're still alive in Kansas City. Well, right. listen, sit down in your room and imagine up in outer space a black hole, a simple black hole. Where are you going to go? You just keep on going down and down. So what started as a one hour event all of a sudden became one hour and 53 minutes, a full length feature film with yeah. research credits, uh, uh, interviews with all the various supporters of Winter Storm and so on. So the movie uh, itself, it, it started out to be an online just video, but it turned out to be a movie, thanks to Murray Blair. Yeah. And through all this, we had the total support of the directors of Winter Storm, even though in the initial stages, they didn't know what we were doing, because uh, we were still uh, doing it ourselves, you see. Yeah. And, um, but boy, in the end, we all got together and boy, they really praised what we'd done and made the decision to go total public with this. Hence, it's now up on YouTube and through the MHAF site, you know. So that's and sort of a little brief history. And it's definitely well-deserved what you guys have put together. We've dropped it here in the comments section. You can find it at uh, winterstorm.net. I mean, even if you just go to YouTube and uh, type in Winter Storm Concert. It's, it's going to pop up real quick. And I mean, yeah. can, uh, enough praise cannot be given to you guys. I mean, I think first and foremost, for saying out loud, okay, there's lots of online competitions. Maybe we can do something to balance that out. Maybe we can do something that's more educational or entertaining. Right on. Um, and then, then after that, to follow that up with, well, we don't know what this is going to be, but we can give everyone a shout. We can really put our minds together and, and put this thing together and see what happens. How long did it take you guys to endure to, to produce this beautiful product that you guys have made? Well, we'll do the math. Okay. The conversation with Beth in October, we okay. started sending out notices to all our potential players and more, by the way, um, wow. in November. And uh, we finished... So we say about two days before it went online, March 27th. So we're wow. talking five months. Wow. Um, and uh, very gratifying because the letter, I sent all the communications out and it was requested that everyone donate their services mm. to mm -hmm. promote what we love doing in January. And yeah. everybody, everyone to a T came on board with that. So this production was done with no financial backing and no cost to any one of the performances. Uh, and that includes the time that Murray and I spent. And when I say probably 50 man hours a week for five months, it's wow. not too far wow. off that, you know? But wow. you know, all along, uh, I'd add to that, this whole story of Winter Storm has to mm -hmm. do with some, uh, not only a steadfast set of uh, directors. We've mm. uh, only had three presidents, uh, Jeff Kresge, Cliff Davis, and Beth uh, Wilson over the uh, duration of 21 years. So there's consistency. 
We had yeah. financially, we kept in on top of things by running these events with a great uh, treasurer, Mike Schenk, uh, yeah. for years, uh, no longer with us. Uh, he's uh, retired. And then we had sponsors that, come, that came on, you know. Yeah. We had uh, the bagpipes, McCollum's and R.G. Hardy, yeah. for sure. The drum companies, which you're familiar with, Pearl, yeah. uh, Premier, and, uh, and Dante. That's right. And then uh, if you go on the website, you're going to find a fabulous history review of what's gone on in pictures. Uh, yeah. And the photographers, Earl uh, Richardson and Randy Keppel, have uh, informed the public through the uh, visual aspects of uh, yes. saying, hey, this event's been going on for years. You can see uh, the crowds that come. You can see some of the performers and so on. So our photography uh, backing uh, for this has been fabulous. So um, yes. I, I think um, the whole event uh, um, has been established based on this total cooperation of, of sponsors, um, uh, attendees. I didn't even mention that att attendees and volunteers are volunteer-based. Right. I'd hate to estimate what it is right now. It might be over 100 uh, yeah. different people that have stepped up again for the enjoyment of the weekend. And the hotels uh, in Kansas City have come across for us. Uh, so what I can't say much more about the event that way, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Ken Eller. I, I mean, there's there's no way to give enough praise for everyone at MHAF for what they've now done for 20 years. And if we were kind of yeah. if we were to kind of work our way backwards a little bit and, and talk about some of these these keystone moments, you mentioned something about what Murray Blair brought to the table as far as uh, evolving the concert. The concert was always amazing. You get amazing musicians together, give them a concert stage, they're going to make amazing music, right? But I agree yeah. with you. What Murray seemed to bring to the table was to take it from a very excellent recital with some fun stuff sprinkled in to an actual production, to an actual top to bottom concert. And that's clearly reflected in this video you guys made. It was not just, it is not just a compilation of some of the greatest piping and drummers and their videos um, spliced together. No, it's, it's, kind of a movie. It's kind of a documentary. You guys talk a lot about history. You give some beautiful context to the music that we're hearing from these folks. I didn't expect that. So absolutely, this is beyond just a great compilation of performers. It is more of more of a movie, more of a documentary. Well, you know, uh, over the uh, period of time, uh, we've had three directors of the concert, Mark mm -hmm. Stanfield, Doug Stronick, mm -hmm. and now Murray. And yeah. each one contributed enormous uh absolutely uh, i won't say i won't say upgrades innovations to the concert going from yeah. maybe a, a review type situation to yeah. putting groups together bringing bands in that's right and more of the visual with uh doug and then uh moving on to murray now uh and the movie itself has sort of been um uh, the uh crowning uh thing that i think we have accomplished and we're leaving now something in a way of a legacy and yes i, I think the event will be, it, I don't see it ever stopping. It's so important. Mm. It's held at the most important time of the year. Mm. Ten days after the new year, you're anxious to get out of the house. That's uh, right. Uh, That's right. You, you, want, you want your music. And secondly, it's held right in the dead center of the United States of America. Yeah. So easy to get to. Exactly. And thirdly, you have the prospects of a good Kansas City ice storm. One year we had we got barricaded in for two days. So you know, one year is, that seems like most years. What I what I what I typically tell people is it's called winter storm, and that is not a creative title. That is in fact a warning that we just happened to brand to turn into this you know event. Yeah, yeah, it's actually winter during that time. <laughs> you want you want your marketing to be positive, and you know you got to be careful there. It so is accurate. It is storm. positive. It is a winter <laughs> storm happening during winter storm. Yeah, you say one year we got barricaded in. I oh. I always approach getting to and from winter storm as a challenge, right? Because oh. that's always what it is. <laughs> Just ask our overseas uh, instructors. Oh man, they have to fly to Newark or Chicago. Yeah, the chances of getting out of there in one day or two days. And I can remember William McCollum years mm -hmm. ago not getting home to some type. Like Wednesday night from oh, man. a weekend game, you see. So, oh, man. Uh, but uh, given that, that's all part of the charm of the weekend. And I think the other it thing, is. it's a melting pot that you don't have probably anywhere else in the world where all these people can get together for num not the competitive thing, but that's a right. social weekend. And it Absolutely. caters to people's uh, desires. And, you know, on the, on the movie that's just finished its first week of running, 
uh, the comments that are coming back to me are thank yous for filling mm. this void in the pandemic. The yes. fact that people are tired of watching uh, the movies on, on TV, they're tired of reading books. Uh, they might be exercising, but they need something more to fan their uh, imagination as far as entertainment is concerned. And Absolutely. This, and it went out on Saturday morning, and it was a and it was a dull day around most of North America. Great stuff. So I'm yes. hoping for more dull weather so they can watch the video a little bit more. Absolutely. <laughs> I, yeah. I couldn't agree with you more on all of that, Ken. I mean, un, again, enough enough thanks cannot be given to you and Murray and everyone at MHAP for, you know, for making this happen in a time where we really need this, right? I mean, this is this is a big reason why you and I are chatting live right now is because you know we we are all we are all isolated in our own way, regardless of our family and work situation, and we need to remember the value of connectivity, right? And we yeah. need to remember that we have these amazing friends who are amazing musicians to do these amazing things and to put out something like this to remind us of that, that we can always enjoy. It's not like uh, that movie you guys created is ever going to be dated. We'll always be able to go, oh yeah, there's that awesome thing Ken and Murray put together and just listen to it when we're jogging around or just watch it instead of a Netflix movie one night. It really is that impactful. That's right. We're encouraging people to watch it two, three, and four times. I can't tell you how many times I've gone through it just with the editing alone. But <laughs> right. Now, but now I'm watching it for my entertainment. And yeah. You know, one of the things that uh, is interesting uh, when Murray uh, Murray is full of wonderful ideas, and one of the ones he brought up to me, he says, "We're going to make this look like it's truly something at home." So he says, "Wait for the first snowstorm and go outside and do a recording of the introduction." Well, awesome. it was, the, wind, the wind was blowing, hair was disabled, there was <laughs> snow background, and I was freezing. Uh, and <laughs> my knees were knocking, okay? And, um, and then by the time the concert finished, the snow had gone, so we went out in a uh, more melted scene, you see. But these are all little uh, side effects that came in. Yeah. And, um, we had fun doing it. And that, and, but the, I think uh, the other contribution came from people like yourself. These mm. Vox Pops that we put in, really mm. spelt the story of how people appreciated and uh the winter storm over the years and the fact that they were going to attend they're going to keep and that oh, might yeah. reach out to a, a larger community and we're certainly hoping for that you know my goodness yes it, it was a beautiful touch and, and of course i i mean you know i i'd been a part of companies in past and i always said all right step one we got to support and be at winter storm and then, of course, when when Rhythm Monster, re, you know, was able to get up and rock and the first thing we said was we are going to Winter Storm. Right. It was our even That's to this right. day. It's the only live event that Rhythm Monster does just to present, not to go shoot and record artists. And we, yep. we don't have any more right now on our agenda. We will in the future. But it really was that immediate. We have to sponsor Winter Storm. We have to be there to participate in the exposure and the education of the art form that, that, that they have established for so long. And I mean, because I, Ken, I think that, you know, I, I am a really good example of what the right people with the right vision and the right music can, can produce because, you know, I was from Little Town, USA, playing in Little Town, USA pipe band. Nothing too terribly inspiring. Good people, good times. That's about it. And I couldn't find the right inspiration to put me over the musical hump because I was already doing lots of other pretty serious music stuff outside of pipe bands. And then at the point where I thought, nah, I, I don't think this is for me. This really isn't that. It's not that challenging. It's not that interesting. Someone mentioned to me this thing in Kansas City. And this would have been, I believe, 2002 either 2002 or 2003, right when I had um, aged out of marching DCI. And so I said, well, okay, I got family and friends up there. It's only a three hour drive from you know where I'm going to college. Why not? I'll go to this thing, this pipe band thing. And it just, it was just game over after that. I mean, to see, you know, Kilpatrick and Eric Ward and Gordon Brown and Reed Maxwell, Tyler Fry, I mean, all of them, all of them on the sta same stage at the same time. It, it was for me personally the first time I saw mastery of this art form, mastery. And still to this day, if you live in a certain part of the world, you have YouTube, you've got resources like Rhythm Monster where you can be exposed to the best artists, uh, and that's all well and good. 
but that's not the same as seeing it and hearing it in person. Just like the first time you hear a major symphony orchestra, it is life-changing. First time you go to a big rock concert, it's life-changing. Winter Storm was life-changing for me. It was the thing that made me said, or made me say to myself, I need to pursue this music. And for me, it was just, I now understand how powerful this music is, how powerful the music of the great Highland bagpipes is, how powerful pipe band, snare drumming, tenor drumming, and bass drumming are. Holy smokes. And I would love nothing more than to have other people in their own individual musical walks, because most people are in high school band, then they don't do music anymore. Maybe college, then they don't do music anymore. Some people never got the opportunity to pursue music, but they actually have pipe bands. They just don't realize it. They just don't realize how awesome it is. And Winter Storm helps advocate that powerful message. Well, you know, that's a, that's a good thing. I'm glad you mentioned that, you know. Um, the important thing, uh, I think, for an awful lot of people uh, is a chance to rub shoulders with yeah. some of the best people in your field. Can you imagine uh, yeah. if you were to meet Arthur Fielder, Yo-Yo Ma, uh, these types of people? Uh, you'd never wash your hands for a lifetime. Oh, <laughs> right. Time. Hand. You get the idea, you know. Yes. And, uh, and and we have the same thing in piping. And you've met uh, mm. uh, some of the luminaries that we have uh, in the drumming end right now. Uh, yep. We've had it in tenor and bass. Uh, Stevie McQuillan's a good example. And now yep. Christina Hanks, she's on the video and so on. And, you know, we've always had Fred Morrison, who has taken a big shine to Kansas City. In fact, yeah. he's even composed music. He has this fabulous tune. I was hoping he'd play it in the video called the Kansas City Hornpipe. And if you oh, want to look awesome. it up on YouTube... It's going to rock your socks. Let me tell you, it's really, really good, okay? That's um, awesome. But then, but then we've had these steady people uh, like Willie and Stuart. Yeah. Um, and Callum's on board now. Um, yeah. And Jack Lee. I can, I, I, you know, I'm not going to name everyone. I'll forget uh, the people that have gone down over the years. But yeah. so many are still with us. And they look on this weekend for the same way. And guess, guess what? They have a fan base, and this gives them an opportunity. And so it's a two-way street. They rub shoulders with their fans. That's and right. For their, and this helps their in their private businesses and what have you. Yeah. Um, they they give up the time. So the overseas people come in probably around Tuesday or Wednesday before the event and don't get home till Tuesday or Wednesday the following week. So it's, it's a full week commitment, you know? It, it's totally true. I mean, the, the more involved you get in the event itself, the more you realize – you know, I, I, regardless of your reason for being there, competitive stuff, to see the concert, the workshops, whatever, the social environment of being there a day or two before, sticking around a day or two after, right? Even yep. if the weather doesn't force you to do that, doing that voluntarily, I mean, that that's almost where the best stuff is, to just be able to hang out, to just chill at the bar and have a beer, you know, to hang out in the lobby really yep. is an integral part of the experience for many of us, absolutely. Sure. If we can't get you with the music, though, we'll get you with the barbecue in Kansas City. That's, that's exactly that's right. <laughs> so, there's alternative reasons for coming as well. So that's really that's good, exactly you know? right. Well, suffice it to say, I mean, um, you know, anyone who's ever chat with me about pipe band stuff, if especially if they live in North America, I always say if there's one thing you go to each year, it needs to be Winter Storm. Um, I, I could not be a stronger advocate of it for whatever your focus may be. If you are thinking this pipe band music thing might be for me, however that, that fulfills that part of your life, there is no better opportunity to explore that and to actually get in it, realize what it is than in Kansas City at Winter Storm. And so if any of you out there are still on the fence about whether or not to go whenever the world gets back to normal, I mean... I, I certainly, that's what I've always told people. If there's one thing you take off work for during the off season, if there's one thing you spend some money towards to explore this music, it's Winter Storm. How do you say, how, how does that come from Ken Eller when you speak to people or, or ah, I've heard of Winter Storm, but I don't know, it's a long way away, travel and lodging is expensive. What do you to say to, to people who are on the fence, Ken Eller? Well, I turn on the uh, high emotional uh, aspect of me and I said, you have to come. And, oh, and fact, just like that. I've even told people, I'm flying out of Toronto, and here's my flight numbers. Get on that flight. Uh, and uh, I just, uh, I've totally swung into it. It's uh, for all well, these 20 years. Uh, yeah. And I've told, and I've mentioned it to the directors many times. I believe in this event. I believe in mm. the entertainment mm. of people. I believe yeah. in all the volunteers. And I believe in all those people that have come over the years. Uh, yeah. I think Cliff has a, a mailing list of over 4,000 people that 
he sends out regular updates to and so on. So uh, when you believe yeah. in something and it's musical, it's in your own backyard, then I believe uh, it's not the amount of time that you put into it. It's the, uh, the concern to keep it going, to perpetuate it over the years. And yes. I think one thing I hope for this movie, that it sets a new standard for presenting our music uh, on maybe YouTube or in yeah. video form yeah. or movie format. Yeah. Uh, and it raises the bar uh, a little higher than just the recital review type of thing or the individual performance, you know? Uh, and it's totally entertaining, not necessarily the pipers and drummers, but to all those people out there just like to hear some good music. And yes. it'll certainly yeah. be a good product, I think, to uh, tell the masses, so to speak, that yeah. piping yeah. and drumming music is good music. Enjoy it. It's not the maybe walking down the street in the 4th of July parade or, you know, St. Patrick's Day parade. Um, That's right. And it's a very, right. at our level, it's a very serious thing. This is yeah. our life. Yeah. And every one of the performers that made it a lifestyle from a young age. I started at eight years old. Wow. And it's the passion. Uh, my wife calls it obsession. But I, I temper that with say it's just a big passion, okay? And I think every director, every volunteer for Winter Storm has that passion mm. for this particular event. And it has to have something going when the past presidents don't walk away. They're still there in committee to advise yeah. along yeah. the way. So it's a, a seriously coordinated event. And the yes. past comes the future eventually through the good advice of these uh, people on the board of directors, okay? For yeah. sure. You actually made a really great point a couple of times, Kineller, about the consistency of the organization, that the organization yeah. is now 20 years old and only three presidents, 20 That's years right. old and only three concert directors. That's fantastic. You know, and only two and only two treasures, two treasures. I mean, I mean, th that is phenomenal consistency and that is phenomenal commitment. And I mean, at, at that level, at the organizational level, you must be local. And you do not have to be a, a, a world champion performer, but you, I do think that you have to be a world-class ambassador, right? You have uh -huh. to be someone who understands the culture, the art form, the community well enough and loves the music well enough, loves those things well enough to be able to continue to advise always thinking ahead, always looking forward to how things can evolve. And that crew in Kansas City, I, I, I truly believe that, that they individually and collectively are just an iconic example of how to be a team and how to be in an organization, regardless of what your mission or product is. Yeah, you coined the right word, ambassadors. Yeah. Every one of them. Uh, and mm. it's on their, uh, on their plate 12 months of the year. And so in January, when one event has finished, we're right back at the drawing board, see? And they yeah. solicit improvements from attendees and so on. And yeah. you'll be amazed over the years, uh, <coughs> excuse me, how many of those uh, suggestions have come to the fore and so on. Um, yeah. And they've gone outside. Um, for years, uh, Cliff Davis would ask me to promote in Scotland when I'm over for the championships there. So we would run uh, a social event at the Todd Bar, for example, yep. uh, uh, the night after or uh, the day after the Worlds, uh, and just promoting Winter Storm amongst the people that attended there, a good pipe band community, you see. So That's right. They saw that we were had, had their, their own interests in mind all the way through. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and so I forgot to mention they've also added, we think of it as entertainment, but part of the entertainment package is uh, they have a whiskey tasting now. Which, uh, I'm of telling course. You, I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get put off my job and go to the whiskey tasting. <laughs> That's exactly uh, right. And they have a, a high-end uh, raffle for uh, yeah. donated whiskey, and yeah. the Bulkleys from Arkansas uh, have mm -hmm. been a constant contributor to that, and they've yeah. done a great job. And, and uh, they said it in the Vox Pops. They've been coming every year for ten years. Uh, I thought they had reserved seats in a state in a, in a place that had no reservations, but right. they're always front and center, so they're always first into the concert somehow. You know, it's phenomenal. Yeah. That's it phenomenal. phenomenal. And of yeah. course, the whiskey tasting has to be a part of it. It's it's cultural, Ken Eller. It's part of what we do. <laughs> the music would not exist if not for the whiskey. Let's be honest about it. So it has to be oh, there, no, of no. course. Oh, I like to put it the other way around. The whiskey wouldn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep your priorities straight. Yes. <laughs> I, I like that very much. Well, Ken yeah. Eller, let's, 
I'd like to, you know, talk with you about about the future if we can, right? Since you you've seen this radical evolution, you've seen the things that, you know, that work that have contributed the most to growth over the years. You know, where do you think Winter Storm is heading next? And I and I'm saying this um less about trying to get get on the, you know, uh, the inside of the director's discussions because I mean, you know, we're in those discussions with them. We're always saying, how about this? How about this? How about that? I'm asking more for Ken Eller. What does Ken Eller think and feel and perceive is going to be the next step, the next addition to this already phenomenal event? Well, you know, I don't know if there's going to be additions. I think I at this stage, I'm looking at refinement. Mm, uh, the, okay. It, it has grown uh, from, as I said, a, a one weekend musical workshop for instruction purposes mm -hmm. to this. Uh, this is a, a, a mega piping and drumming event. Uh, it's a big corporation of yeah. nonprofit, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and so expanding into a different market, I don't see that. Our market is already there. And I think sustaining that market, uh, attendance at the concerts and what have you. I do see the concert going uh, in leaps and bounds. Uh, what we, uh, we've got ideas for the concert to make it almost like a, a um, I won't say a Broadway musical, but if we ever get to Broadway, <laughs> that would be the pinnacle, wouldn't it? Right. Uh, what I'm looking at, uh, we're possibly looking at lighting, if look, better lighting effects, for example, okay. better stage production, maybe yeah. less of me talking as an MC, maybe voiceovers and, you know, get my mug okay. off the screen, so to speak. Um, uh, that aspect of it. The uh, the uh, night after the concert, the winter steam party just seems to evolve with uh, the events on stage, emceed by Jack Lee. Um, that is just pure fun, and you'll see by yeah. some of the pictures you see people hoisting their glasses, uh, yeah. people just having a good yuck up and what have you. That yeah. has been very very successful. That will continue on. The contest now, um, there's been a push over the years to increase the events, but we've got. When you look at it, we're covering almost every single solo piping and drumming event there is. Yeah. Um, and uh, the sponsors, uh, the feedback from all the sponsors through this movie production have been most positive that they're on board for next year. So yes. expansion, you know, you got to be careful. Uh, how many new cars is uh, Tesla going to come out with in the next uh, few years? I don't know. Right. Maybe it might look a little different, but they're not right. going to increase the numbers, you know. And I, I look at Winter Storm like that. Uh, I think we have maxed out. Now, one of the issues that always presents itself as the a number of attendees uh, 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 show up every year, we went from one hotel, the mm -hmm. Marriott, to right. the Hall of the Inn next door, which you're familiar with. Right. Uh, and if we start to increase past this, we, we're going to we're going to take over Kansas City. You know, it's true. Uh, that's right. And if the Kansas City Chiefs make the playoffs, there might not be a room. We got to be very careful here, you know. That's right. Uh, we'll have to switch locations with the Chiefs, where we take over the stadium and they get to play their game in the Marriott, right? Uh, now, it's now it's an eventual talking, flip there. That's the correct priorities, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I wouldn't tell the Kansas City people that, but Winter yeah, Storm right. has gotten so big in that sense, mm. and I think that's the attraction. People from the West Coast, people from the East Coast, the South. We've had people coming in from Australia, New yeah. Zealand, so many from the UK, Canada. Uh, I come out of Canada on a third, uh, Wednesday or Thursday uh, out of Toronto, and our flight is 100% filled with people going to Winter Storm. That's right. A commercial flight. Go That's figure. right. You know? Isn't that awesome? That, that's the best thing in the world when you're going to, you know, a big, especially music and education event, and you're on the same plane with other, you yeah. know, musicians or attendees or whatever. It's oh. it's a really special thing when that happens. It reminds of reminds me of our first trips to Scotland, where a couple of bands would charter a plane. Oh, a great time! But everyone's got uh, one thing in mind: how's the weekend going to pan out for them? You know? Sure. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, so it's anticipation. Last year, we didn't get out until the Monday night or Tuesday morning uh, because of bad weather and flights being canceled. Wow. Canceled yeah. it was ice. In. But that turned out just to be an extension of the weekend. And so exactly. next year, I'm looking for it again next year. It's great. I'm not, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You bring up a good point, uh, Ken. I, I like what you say that that you know maybe the goal is not necessarily expanding but refining. How do we do what we're already oh, yeah. doing and do it better? I I am I am with you on that a hundred percent. I mean, there's always a part of me that that wants to say, "Cool, how can we get 
every single high school and university musician in Kansas City to come to Winter Storm, right? And if that became a priority, the scary reality is, well, we could do that, but then what would we do with everyone? You know what I mean? Where would we put them? Because right. that uh, the church where we have the concert, what a beautiful location for a concert that cannot hold one more performer, one more audience member. That's right. So there's a limit right there. Eleven yeah. hundred people. It's been walking distance from the hotel. Mm -hmm. And and you know what you're also saying is that bigger is not better. Absolutely. Rolls Royce does not go on a production line year after year and that's right. right up their production. They that's right. A quality product, and if we can continue, and I know we can, with yeah. the people that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that will go on and I, I think you're you've got you've captured it, uh, exactly what I was thinking refinement how yes. can we make this product better and yes. you know you just might see uh, a movie another movie from murray and myself along the same lines but i guarantee it it too will be better so oh, of Murray's course it will ideas. he's got some ideas in his mind absolutely and, uh, a good producer as uh also a creative and has an imagination of course, of so course. I see something coming down the line not this year we uh we have to take uh a little bit gotta of take a, a break. break. Yeah, gotta yeah. let those creative juices relax before you can go <laughs> re, you know, do it better next time. Absolutely. You know, for you me, for, for me, can again, you know, I I can absolutely understand and agree with you that this is perhaps an event and a purpose where bigger is not better. You know, the the thought that I've had about what you know what could we do to refine what we do. Um, I I think that there's there's a a lot to be said for uh, for attendees to somehow have a way to apply what they are learning and seeking influence from. And all the discussions, you know, that we've always had, you know, with the Rhythm Monster team and what we can uh, possibly provide at half is 100% around experience. How do we give people the experience of trying out those sticks, pads, or mallets they've only ever seen online? How do they get an opportunity to the, okay, that, that stuff that Gordon Brown just taught me in his class, how can I come over here and have some time to kind of work on that with someone, right? Where can I do that? And, you know, the, the experiential piece, the application piece, you know, it is something that we all need and want, but then we have these interesting limitations of logistics. We can't actually take over Chief Stadium just yet. You know what I mean? So how can we possibly do that? With instruments, let's be honest, they're quite loud, right? How, how do we give people that, that hands-on experience um, to take these influences, take this information, and maybe even try them on some new products, try it with some new technology, whatever the case may be, working with the confines of the Holiday Inn and the Marriott. And, you know, our, our position for Rhythm Monster has always been, well, whenever a, you know, a logistical solution presents itself or whenever something becomes plausible, like the answer is yes, we're there to try to pull it off because I think that that is a that's an aspect of it that we that we could look forward to in the future without necessarily adding buildings to the equation yeah i think uh you remind me of one word that sort of suits the overall umbrella for the uh the weekend it's ambiance mm, and yeah. create an atmosphere where everyone is comfortable uh anything that they would wish is provided for by the volunteers yeah uh, there's misunderstanding of what the weekend's purpose is mm. uh, accommodation is taken care of the food is there and if you wish the bar scene which uh it's hard to get away from that bar i can't even walk to the outside door I without going to the bar. and boy you know, somebody's gonna grab you you know yeah uh, and the hotel provides so much for that and uh, yep. the marriott uh believe it or not uh, and this is a true story when i walk into the marriott on the wednesday evening off my flight i'm greeted by the doorman by name that's uh, awesome. We've been this, and I'm sure that's happened to so many people. That's We've awesome. We've been there for so many years. And the, I'm going to tell you another thing about this group. You got, so we say we got 1,200, 1,400 people there. Mm -hmm. uh, there has not, in my knowledge, ever been one incident of vandalism, yeah. uh, rowdiness, or what have you. Boy, after you've had a belly full of beer at the winter's team party, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, that's and we're right. playing pipe drums in the lobby no complaints the hotel has bent over backwards to give us uh our our freedom but the hotel yeah. is ours and that's ambience uh, provided by the hotel yeah. staff 
and coordinated by once again the volunteers and yeah. directors. Well, yeah, and I, that is I, a I, an outstanding point that I think none of us should ever take for granted. We are oh. given full reign of this beautiful hotel in this beautiful part of the plaza area of Kansas City, and we are given full reign twenty four seven. You know, for three, four solid days. And you're totally right, Ken Eller. I mean, I'm certainly not aware of one one bit of misbehaving, one bit of someone's emotions getting the best of them. None of that. It's always nope. been smooth sailing. That is absolutely true. That is a beautiful gift that we all have from the Marriott. That's right. So it's it's social, it's academic, uh, it's entertaining. Yeah. Uh, it, the four-day weekend offers every possible uh thing that a person might want at that time of the year and that's, right. uh, that's I, I think that's the great thing for it so it's going to go on and uh and and i don't see it changing format too much again yeah. that's the director's decision but and they're sure. progressive but uh mm. i i know that when it comes to um building a product uh you build it to the size of your environment and uh yeah. you can't you can't outstrip the size of your environment the, the the hotel structure, the yeah. concert stage, uh, the concert hall itself. That's right. That's uh, right. Frank Lloyd Wright uh, concert hall. If anybody's interested, uh, so it, it's designed acoustically. It's unbelievable the, for the sound production. It's perfect. Uh, they, it's absolutely really perfect is. for this music. Oh. Yeah. And, yeah, and so uh, that, and so that's one of the things with the movie production. Uh, you try to, uh, and you're familiar with this, emulate the concert stage uh, sound issues with things like reverb and a little echo and yep, you know this yep. type of thing hopefully the uh, the sound production came out as it would have been on the stage um but i it, see throughout this excellent. movie there's another you're asked about going forward mm -hmm. i do see this movie offered two or three i would say fabulous uh uh listening opportunities uh mm -hmm. with other mm -hmm. instruments and I, I i would cite alistair lee's up front Mm. Uh, uh, multi-instrument talented uh, piper from the Vancouver area. Mm -hmm. I would go uh, down to Matt McIsaac, who's a full professional. Uh, he's traveled on the road with the great fiddler from Cape Breton, Natalie McMaster, for years. Mm -hmm. um, and he he did some fabulous musical stuff there. This is uh, Now, this is stretching beyond just pipes and drums by themselves. And yeah. then Roddy S. McDonald, Osaka, Japan. I hope you liked the animation that Willie put in, it was, uh, we hope that we had a Japanese flair for you, you know? It, it, the, the creative effort, certainly noticeable. And I mean, certainly appreciative. Again, it's, it's the little stuff like that um, that makes it something more than just a music compilation and that it has kind of an arc from top to bottom, the whole thing. So ab absolutely, anyone who's actually watching this performance, you know, is going to enjoy those little elements that just make the listening experience a little bit more. Yeah, it, it lifts, I think, the enjoyment uh, 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 or excitement of the concert beyond just the uh, competitive piper and drummer. It's and important. Was... It's important to do that, right? I mean, we 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 all can oh. get just too lost in the the competitive aspect of this activity, and we need things like this to remind us this this is music. We we can oh, compete I... with it, but it's music. You're absolutely correct, and I, I would cite Fred Morrison at the end. Mm. He he's, he is total participation in entertainment. Yeah. He's got a fabulous stage personality. And yeah. He presents it, and he. He represented at the end of the concert the down home aspect of the concert. Absolutely, and he, even, he he owes us a few stories next year. He did promise those in his video, uh, and the other performers, <laughs> each of the other performers, put some something traditional in and yes. also something new. Yeah, uh, Callum Bowman had a new tune of his own, uh, and Willie played a very obscure two four march. Fabulous music, and Jack yeah. came home with great tune. Uh, uh, horn pipes and and a good jig, uh, and we've got music online now for these new tunes that came that, that we came out with. They can download them free of charge. So awesome. Alan Tully with the St. Lawrence O'Toole band, which really went right over the top to oh, yeah. appease this type of thing. I was really surprised. They had something like 22 pipers and 16 drummers on the, on the one video. So it's phenomenal. cool. 
So cool. That's, yeah. That's the cooperation that we got from, from Ireland, you see, and I can't yeah. laud them enough or thank them enough, you know? Yeah. Uh, so th this is all, all the package that you can, you can see the different facets that we had in putting together and each one presented its own challenge. Uh, one of the things that which you'll respect going forward, uh, let's take the salute for Max Rain. We've right. got five top drummers, we've got a tenor and we've got a bass. And now the sinking of those players uh, individually and then collectively becomes uh, a major production yeah. item. That's and right. And Murray worked and worked in that because you can't, you, you know, with stick, you want the sticking uh, as close as possible. Well, right. the professional might be able to pick out a few things here and there, but I'm not a professional in drumming and I don't pick out anything. I love it, you see. The Peabrook, yep. uh, the, we, we, we kept the true to the concert stage for, format. We included a Peabrook, which Roddy McLeod put together with a, uh, with the four pipers, we got Colin, we got Jack, we got yeah. Stuart and Willie. Um, yeah. That was another piece of work, putting that together, because Peabrick is very, we don't have a meter to follow in the classical music. Right. And it's, express it as you see fit. So when you get five top players, they all have their specific style. So bringing right. that together, Murray's magic yeah. was worked on that, believe you me. And so Phenomenal. This, this, these are some of the challenges. Uh, so going forward, I hope uh, other organizations start, start to take up the banner type of thing, and perhaps yeah. they can do something like that. Because, yeah. you know, musicians not only play to entertain, they need to have playing to be entertained. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I, I, I always, the word I use for this is simply application right? You're <laughs> learning about a music, you're training, you're studying, you're doing things. You have to have a place to apply it that is truly singularly for the music, for the enjoyment of it, not for, you know, trophies and medals and things. That sort of application can be done in the virtual environment, you know? And I predict, Ken Eller, even when the world is back to normal and we can be together again, nothing replaces in life musical experiences, playing together, listening, teaching, no, nothing replaces in life, but this this digital game isn't going anywhere, right? It was oh, actually oh, it's yeah. actually been here quite a while, and I know a lot of pe people feel like they've been pushed over the hump. And there's an aspect of it that will reduce a little bit, but online competitions, online concerts, online education, it's here to stay, and it's good. It does not replace real life, but it supplements it in a way that nothing else can. It's a beautiful gift, it really is. So, so perfect. One door closes, Michael, another door opens. And the pandemic has had many positive effects on us as mus musicians. Yeah. Granted, yeah. a lot of the professionals have lost income. Uh, concerts aren't going sure. on, stage productions aren't going on. Yes, yes. Uh, our teaching though has increased uh, online. Uh, yeah. my, my instruction uh, numbers has gone up and it spawned things like this concert. And yeah. they, as you say, they complement the live performances. Yes. So I'll, I'll listen to this video so many times from here on in, even though I've already listened to it at least 50 or 60 times. You know what I mean? It's not, it's, Absolutely. It's a form of entertainment. That's yeah. exactly. If you were a sports fan, you'd want to see the Super Bowl played uh, back and back. And you'd analyze it and you analyze it. I think in a year from now, this, this movie is going to be analyzed so much. They're going to see stuff that we don't know. Uh, for yeah. example... And, and then it started already. I had a lady come in to me. She says, how come Jack's, Jack, after he played his five-minute set, his clock didn't go forward five minutes? <laughs> I, I found that extremely funny. <laughs> you know? That's awesome. And, uh, and, and, the, and uh, the, in, the, in the final uh, shot at the end where I'm saying goodbye to everybody, mm -hmm. I've got a picture. I'm in front of my wood lot. We heat our house by wood. Yep. And my wife. My wife's mother had a fabulous statement when she was raising four girls, and it was, everything will be fine. And mm. it's a mantra to live by, because it will be. It's uh, true. And now, embedded in our wood pile is exactly that statement. Everything uh. will be fine. And you'd be surprised the people that picked up it. They weren't looking at the captain. They were looking at my wood pile. That's you know? awesome. <laughs> and these are the things. <laughs> and and it, it, you know it leaves a little different sparkle on the event that's going on. So uh, yeah. so we're gonna we're certainly encouraging uh, um, multi views. And some people come back and say, well, I've been I've watched it four or five times. I said, well, great, you got a few more times to go. You know that, that that's right. That's what I hope. Yeah. And so, and, and you really can. I mean, you can you can 
listen to it and watch it actively. You can just have it, you know, playing in your ears while you're doing something else. And I mean, th- th- there's a lot to be had from it. it. It really is, Ken Eller. It is a, it's it's such a great representation of the art form. Um, because I mean, I can certainly say when I when I think about the folks who, um, who discovered pipe bands or pipe band drumming, you know, through the Rhythm Monster community circle. There are some people who are immediately into the competitive aspect. Ooh, the MSR. Ooh, the, oh, man, I got to do that. I'm going to start working up and playing grade one one of these days. But then there's other people, you know what I'm saying? I mean, for some oh, people, yeah. that, that's what it is. You are driven by virtuosity and you're driven by competition. But I, I think that there's, there's an equal or greater number of people who simply see an opportunity to finally learn an instrument. Right, yep. the concert band stuff back in school days didn't work out. Ah, string and orchestra stuff. Ah, drum line or this rock band. You know, whatever it was, they liked music. They liked to listen to it. But you get that thing in your hand, and it just doesn't make sense. Then all of a sudden, somehow, bagpipes or one of these three miraculous drums we have that seems to resonate. And oh, the best players in the world are in their forties and fifties or whatever. You know, they're they're older. They're not just kids. Wow. Wait, wait, there's a, I have a band nearby. Wait a minute. I can do this stuff. And so for those people who aren't competitively driven, showing them the BBC videos or even the Rhythm Monster videos from Scotland, that's not the thing that lights the fire, right? The thing that lights the fire is the Fred Morrison album, right? Or concerts like this. It's actually hearing the music being presented in a more holistic approach that makes someone think, not only do I love to listen to this, I might now give this a try. I might pick up some mallets, a chain or some sticks. I might be able to do this now. That is super important. I think that's how we make sure that we perpetuate this art form all over the world. Yes, there's this competitive thing over here, but there's also everything else. And I, and I think that this video more than everything is a beautiful demonstration of what everything else can be. Well, I really appreciate that thought. I, I think it's an attempt to think outside of the winter storm box and outside the competitive um, drumming and piping box as well yeah. and present something that can be enjoyable to uh people that might be inter- interested in the instrument my um the bulk of my uh online teaching is certainly adults and it's been very popular probably since the time of amazing grace coming out in the early 70s but um uh you'd be surprised the number that are uh, older they might have started when they were younger or had some uh, music experience with piano or yeah. um, in the school system, but they yeah. came to a point in life where this instrument resonated with them. And yes. um, it's an interesting thing, I asked at a workshop once, uh, okay, what about the pipes really turns you on? Why mm. are you taking this instrument? Why am I teaching yeah. you how to play? Yeah. And almost to the person, it came out as it's the sound. The sound gets to me. There's something yes. that... Um, to coin a phrase that rocks the soul somehow. And yes. when you hear a good piper play, that is exactly it. And yeah. this, uh, so on this particular movie, we presented the best of the best pretty well. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more out there that could uh, could have been in the movie as well, but we yeah. only have so much capacity, you know. Right. But when they, when they hear good players, then they can start to say, hey, there is something to our music. And yeah. if it promotes yeah. our music globally, then that's another function that we didn't look at initially. We looked at it from the promotion of uh, keeping um, Winter Storm alive through this down year. But check. now that we're back, yeah, check, that's right. And now going forward, it just might have a, a more broader universal appeal to people that don't even play the instrument, you know? I mean, I'll, I'll just tell you right out the gate objectively, check. Yes, it does. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I said, Ken Eller, I mean, I... You know, I, I really think this is this is a big part of what of what Rhythm Monster is here to do is to help answer these questions for non pipe band folks. What is this pipe band thing over here? Right. Obviously, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. squarely centered on on the drumming, but this is often the question. What is this? So our first answer is, well, here's the best drum cores in the world of the most prestigious contest in the world for free. Right. Here are the best videos with the best audio we can make. Here's even some music at the bottom for some of them for free. This is what it is, right? And then some people say, ooh, what what else is that? And we say, well, here it is over here. 
And then again, yeah. other people who aren't so competitive, they say, that's incredible. How can I use that? I play drum set. What, what's this got for me? Well, let me tell you what this can do for you. I've always yeah. wanted to play drums. You're saying that there's drums with bagpipes? There are. And look at how amazing this can be, right? That's I right. absolutely think that this video you guys have made serves the same purpose. It helps people realize I can do this too. This is amazing. Let me give this a try. Well, that, that would be the type of effect that we certainly have. And I think we emphasize the fact that um, everybody on this video or movie uh, had a passion for the instrument and promoting the instrument. Hence, they, they, they stepped up to the plate right to the very person, you know? Yeah. And uh, so much appreciated from my, I had more of an administrative role, as you can understand. Murray is mm. the back behind the, the, the Apple computer. There's a promo for Apple. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, but you get the idea. And, yep. um, and so uh, contacting people and getting responses from them, getting videos in and making sure that they were thanked in the appropriate way this yeah. is all the admin stuff, and uh, that having been said, uh, everyone came back with huge thank yous, and uh, I think that's the that's uh, being a, a non-profit, non-monetary a movie. Yeah. Uh, that's the best way of getting to us, the producers. They thanked us, and that's all we want, you know. Well, it's, it's we well need. deserved, Ken Eller, and I mean, again, those two big checks are, I, I think, really apparent, and I think that there's probably going to be even more that videos like this will will serve in the future well ken eller we gotta we gotta wrap this up man as per usual especially if you and i are together chatting this isn't going to end anytime soon it's going to end up like the concert if we're not careful right oh yeah you don't you don't know what you're bargaining for here you know? I, I'm, I'm i'm with you you know i'm with you i can do this yeah, I but but we'll we'll soon have zero people watching this before you know it but ken eller seriously man thank you for everything you've done over the years for for bagpiping, performance and education, for MHAF, for Winter Storm, and for this video. Thank you for taking the time to chat with us. Any of you guys out there, um, if you're interested in this or anything else, you know how to get a hold of Ken Eller at thecaptainscorner.com. Please check out Winter Storm online. Please consider coming to the event when the world gets back to normal. If you think that this whole pipe band game might be for you for whatever reason, Winter Storm is, is the best way to explore that. Ken Eller, I like to ask people towards the end of these right now, what do you say to people out there who are um, not feeling the normal fire when it comes to music, right? When they're really missing being able to practice or perform or teach in real life, and they maybe feel some sort of pressure to do more. What do you say to someone to keep them healthy and happy at home and by continuing to play on their own until we get over this hump? Number one, listen to the video, the movie itself. I've had yep. more people come to me and say, you have filled that void that I was looking for. I just might get my pipes out today and have a tune. Okay. Awesome. And right there just hear it and you'll realize what you've missed yeah. and so many people so many people have not been playing it's yeah. motivation and this yes. might be just that little in that says if you have a tune you just might like it okay i love that's it, it. just yeah. have a tune i love it ken eller Pretty seriously man thank you so much for all that you do thank you for chatting with us today i can't say that enough this has been really beautiful thank you so very much for all that you do Michael, thank you very, very much. Much appreciated. And all the best to Rhythm Monster, okay? All right. Thank you very much, Get my man. Cheers. Bye-bye. Have a beautiful time, good sir. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.